Brian and I used to be big on urban exploration, <coughs> especially in the dark. About a half hour drive away from our houses is an old hospital slash asylum that's been abandoned for decades. It hasn't been torn down because it's in a really secluded location and it would just cost too much money. <coughs> Brian and I wanted to bring a Ouija board along with us and explore it one Thursday night. Y'all already know what's wrong with this. Y'all y'all already know what's wrong with this picture. They cannot be my friends in real life. So many red flags. In the first couple of seconds. Uh, I don't know if I can take this anymore. Like these people are fucking stupid. Pulling into the unlit parking lot and seeing the massive structure standing tall in the night, even we were having second thoughts. Gangs were known to hide out in this building, or at oh. least that's been rumored. Okay. Surprisingly, there didn't seem to be any security patrolling the perimeter, so the process of getting in was pretty easy. We found a broken window that seemed to have been made into a common entryway by other urban explorers and delinquents. Brian and I have a lot of experience exploring abandoned structures at night, and admittedly, even we were creeped out by this building. We made our way to the highest floor and did a little exploring up there. There were so many holes in the floor that our confidence in the structure holding our weight was low. The floors were creaky and soft in certain spots, and there were rooms that led into dark nothingness. Every time I'd shine my light down into one of them, I'd have the haunting thought of someone or something being inside one of them. We found a good spot to set up the Ouija board and candles. Wow. Yeah, we went all out with this. No shit. When the candles were lit, Brian and I placed our hands on the planchette and began our attempt at communicating with some kind of spirits. We weren't really the type to joke around with it, so we weren't pushing it around ourselves just to mess with each other. However, the planchette didn't move the whole time. Maybe that was because our Ouija board session was interrupted when we heard a creaking noise coming from inside one of the dark open rooms nearby. It wasn't just a fluke noise. It was a steady, consistent creaking once every one or two seconds. Brian and I quietly packed up our stuff. And he whispered to me to go shine the light inside of the room. I whispered he's got to be crazy. What if gang members were in there? Brian whispered, forget it, I'll do it. Fuck I whispered you. no, but he either ignored me or didn't hear me. He tiptoed over to the doorway, which was pointless given that he'd be shining a light into the room. However, he never even turned that light on. Because before he could, a distinct, quiet, Short yet sharp laughing or cackling could be heard coming from inside the room. <laughs> it sounded like an older woman's cackle. I would have been like, sure. Sure, you can go ahead and tiptoe your way over there. But um, I'm going to tiptoe and haul ass. Out, back out of here. I don't know why I was with you in the first place. I, we, we were both bullshitting, but you was, you was, you was, you took bullshit to a whole new level. So I'm a run, and I'm not gonna look back. Um, and that, and that's that. That's the end of our relationship, whatsoever. Don't, don't talk to me no more. You know, don't, don't DM me. You know, don't, don't message me or anything. Right? Don't don't send me no Snapchat. Don't do anything to contact me ever. If you do at least once, I will block you. Just saying. And I bet you know fucking Adam. Fuck Adam. It was the most disturbing moment of my life. Brian screamed run, and we both ran down the ten flights of stairs and back out the window we climbed in through. We continued running all the way back to my car and drove out of the woodsy property. We swore to never go back there, and we haven't. 
The thing that sucks is that we usually recorded our visits to places like this. And one of the few times we didn't, the most disturbing moment of my life took place. That's how it always is. Fuck. A Ouija board though? A Ouija? Like really? Really? <laughs> it happened one night when my parents and I were hearing noises coming from outside of our farmhouse. The best way I could describe the noises were various types of cracking and thud sounds. My dad and I met in the living room to discuss what we should do, because we were positive that there must have been people out there stealing our produce. My dad ran to his gun closet and drew his shotgun, and together we stormed outside into the night, turning on all of the lights mounted on the outside walls of the house. How about we do nothing? My dad apparently saw somebody, because he started yelling stop as he ran to the crops. I followed him, and I too started to spot legs running underneath the crops, oh. the legs of two or more people. My dad called at me to keep up with him as he chased down the thieves in the dark, approaching the woods. Shit. After running about 50 feet into the woods, my dad stopped and reached out his arm to signal for me to stop as well. As I was choking for air while out of breath, I watched my dad as he stood in place, looking around us. I swear we were standing still for like 30 seconds in silence. 30 seconds too long. I didn't have the energy to ask what he was doing, but eventually I caught on. I saw what my dad was looking at. There was a person standing about 10 feet away from us, but all I could see was his face, since he was mostly covered by a bush. The sound of an October leaf crunching nearby revealed there to be another person standing only 10 feet away. As my dad and I looked around more carefully, we realized there were more than just two guys watching us. There were seven, or Damn. eight, or nine, or even more. Shit. My dad slowly looked back at me, and then back at the person closest to him. What made the scene so much more disturbing, we could only see the people's faces, which were partially illuminated by the moonlight. My dad took a few steps back and broke the silence by saying, We're leaving. We, we both started, started walking, walking backwards, backwards noticing, noticing the people, people were inching closer, closer at the, the same time. time. Fuck, fuck, fuck. My dad waved the shot. Okay. Fuck walking. I would've, uh, if I was to... <sighs> See, in the beginning of this, I would've been like, Dad, you go ahead and you, you got that. Go ahead and take care or whatever. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay um, right here. Um, and... and you just let me know, right? If anything is is out there, you know, just just go, I'm, I'm I'm gonna be right here. I'm a I'm gonna watch ever. I'm gonna watch over, um, everything from over 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 here, right? And but 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 you can go ahead into those um those those woods, those deep, dark, pitch, black, woods. I don't, you know, why Why do I have to come with you? I don't want to come with you at all. I'm scared. Can't you see I'm scared? And I do not see your new Adidas. How are you going to run? You can't run. You can't, what the, what the fuck are those? You can't run in those. You don't get fucked up. But I'm not, because I'm right here. But fuck. My dad waved the shotgun around to let them all know he was armed. So? When we made it past the tree line and back onto the property, we sprinted back to the house. I'd never seen my old man run so fast in his life. He slammed the door behind him and watched the windows with the gun still in his hand while I called the sheriff's office. The cops took a while to respond, about 15 minutes, and wow. the two officers that showed up were very unhelpful. They only asked questions and took down notes. They didn't actually go looking for the group we encountered. The cops left within 10 minutes, but it ultimately didn't matter, because by the next day, nothing happened. So we assumed it was over, and it was. There was never any follow-up to this. Yes, I bet you y'all still loving you too. I would've not known. A friend and I were on a road trip from South Carolina to Jersey, where we'd be meeting with a bunch of friends. Okay. We left late in the day to avoid traffic. 
We were somewhere in Maryland when my friend had to get off the highway to find the nearest bathroom. I don't mean to piss. I mean he had the runs all of a sudden and needed to go really badly. Oh, that's nasty. We were driving around some desolate town looking for a place for him to go. There was practically no traffic and all the store lights were off. The place was a ghost town. The further from the highway we got, the quieter and creepier the surroundings got as well. Obviously. Eventually we came across a small 24-hour ghetto-looking Dunkin' Donuts. It was an outlet though, so we had to pull around the strip to a basically hidden parking lot around back. There was not a single other car in the lot. It was so hidden that nobody would ever find it unless they were looking for it. We knew we were in a sketchy area, so I begged him to just hurry back. He said he'd be back in no less than half an hour, as he cracked a smile, reminding me of his annoying humor. He ran off around the building as I sat in the car, windows rolled up, and doors locked. Okay. A pretty bad motion sickness was still wearing off, so I figured it wouldn't hurt to step outside for half a minute just to get some fresh air. As I stood outside in that lot, I was constantly examining my surroundings. Right. It took me a while to take notice to somebody standing all the way down at the far side of the parking lot. Now, it was dark, but I could still tell they were facing the direction of the car. In direct response to that, I got back in the car and locked the door once again. Okay. I guess that was a bad move, because the person at the end of the lot started slowly yet menacingly approaching the car. Maybe whoever that person was saw my reaction as cowardice, and therefore saw me as an easy target. You fucking up. Either way, I texted my friend to come back right away since he had the keys and explained why. The person was getting closer, slowly oh, but surely. I desperately stared at the screen, awaiting my friend's response, just like a guy awaiting a response from his crush. By the time my friend answered the text, he said, I don't give a fuck what he, what, what he responded back. I would have been like, you better, you better, you better, you better cut that poop, poop, poop off prematurely. You better clench up, right? You better hold your butt cheeks. And come on, you better haul ass to this car because I'm ready to floor it. I'm ready to haul ass right now. I'm about to shit bricks myself. Hurry up, bruh. Hurry up. You have 10 seconds. If that. Wait, for real? I replied yes within the same two seconds. He answered back with, shit, laughing my ass off. All right, be right out. Do you have enough fun? I texted back, this is serious, dude. The person was a couple hundred feet away at this point. He was so close that I was about to get out of the car and run. My friend came running around the building just in time. He spotted the guy right away and hopped in the car. He took off with only seconds to spare. Your friend was we bullshit. stopped a couple blocks down the road to catch our breath and discuss. My heart was still racing and I was still in panic mode. Meanwhile, my friend started to find it more and more hilarious. Eventually, far enough into the ride, I was able to laugh about it. But still, it was scary and still is scary to think about what would have happened if that person made it to the car. Maybe nothing. Maybe he just wanted change. Or maybe a lot worse. Fuck that. See, if I'm ever on a road trip, right, and we and I have to use the bathroom, right, I'm gonna make sure, right, that the place I'm using the bathroom is well lit, is well civilized, you know, and there is clear and like it's very clear that it's cameras. Just saying, you know. Because you're not about to just drop me off into a dark ass alley that I don't know where I am, right? And it's like one street light for for like it's just it's just one street light. That's it for like one block, and that one street light is just it flicker. It's flickering. Um, no, because I would have been like, I would, see if you was to drop me off in the middle. Of just like a dark ass alley to use the bathroom. Just like it's like a little corner store. I would have looked at you like you're crazy. I would have I would've, I would've looked around. And be like nope. Nope I can hold it. Come on. Nope. 
Just, I, I, let me, I'm, fuck it. I'm a shit. Nope. No, I'm not going here. I have a bad feeling about this. Adam, Adam, chill out. For real, I'm, a, I'm about to kick you out. There's a reason you're in the back seat. I didn't even want you here, bruh. I didn't. Adam, Adam, say another motherfucking word. For real. For real. Say something. Say something else. Say, say something. Say something else. Fuck. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. But I just that what? Adam. You see? The fuck? <laughs> fuck Adam. That's all I'm saying. Fuck. Hashtag fuck. Um, but. Yeah, I I would say, out of the, the stories that we watched, the first one would have to be, would have to be number one for me. Because how you gonna go to a creepy ass, first of all, it's dark. That's one red flag. It's dark as shit outside, right? Two, you gonna go to this creepy ass building, right? It looks haunted, right? And, and, you're going to bring your Ouija board. I feel like anybody that knows what a Ouija board is and what it's, you know, what it's designed to do as a game deserves to, like, to... No, they, 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 they deserved anything and everything that happens to them during and after they play the Ouija board. Because you cannot tell me, I'm not about to tell y'all that after I read what a Ouija board is and what it does, then I'm going to, I'm going to play it. No, that's not how it works. That's not how nothing works. If it's something creepy, and it's and the only reason I'm talking like this is because it's, 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 um, it's almost three o'clock in the morning, but, and we, that's besides the point, but, they, wow. I just don't know what else to say to somebody that that still wants to play the Ouija board after reading what it is. What do you say to that? What do you say to that person? Nothing. You don't say you can't say nothing. Oh well, you can. You'd be like, you're you're an idiot, and. I'm cutting all ties with you, right? This relationship is over, right? That's all I'm saying. Like, we could, we could, we could. It doesn't matter how long we've known each other. We can know. We can, we we can, we can easily know each other from either. Like I just met you a couple of seconds ago. Or we've known each other since, you know, we was in diapers. The second you mention something about playing or you have a Ouija board, I'm cut I'm cutting everything off with you. I'm cutting everything. Cause I can't I can't I can't do it. Because you if you play with the Ouija board, right, and you get possessed Right, 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 right. Okay. 
I know, I know Gary. I know, I know, I know Gary. My friend Brian and I used to be big on urban exploration, <coughs> especially in the dark. About a half hour drive away from our houses is an old hospital slash asylum that's been abandoned for decades. It hasn't been torn down because it's in a really secluded location and it would just cost too much money. <coughs> Brian and I wanted to bring a Ouija board along with us and explore it one Thursday night. Y'all already know what's wrong with it. to be big on urban exploration, <coughs> especially in the dark. About a half hour drive away from our houses is an old hospital slash asylum that's been abandoned for decades. It hasn't been torn down because it's in a really secluded location and it would just cost too much money. <coughs> Brian and I wanted to bring a Ouija board along with us and explore it one Thursday night. <coughs> 